Well, hey everyone, super excited to be talking to you about nerves today. So we have all experienced it, sweaty palms, shaky knees. Um, if you're like me, most commonly my feet end up like sweating through my heels. And you know, when your foot is like this, your toes just like to kind of claw ugly over the side of your, um, your very cute shoes that no longer look cute because you look like you have like pterodactyl feet happening. So I really wanted to talk with you guys about nerves today because A, as y'all probably know by now, I am a psychology freak. Um, if you could see the, the amount of books that I carry with me around my house, like in a literal box now, my husband makes fun of me because now one or two books is like literally not enough. I carry a box with me wherever I go and I read several books per day at a time. Um, and so anyways, kind of funny, but, um, I've dealt with nerves at my own level for Miss USA, Miss America, you know, all the different times that I've competed. And as I've coached over the last seven years, obviously learning, um, I shouldn't say obviously, cause maybe it isn't obvious, but learning how to control your nerves is the starting place of what makes everything else go right. And why I love this never ending study is because you're always going to continue to have more opportunities in your life to be nervous because hopefully you're continuing to stretch and grow your comfort zone, right? Which is really what that means. And um, so today I really wanna to talk about why do we get nervous? How can we stop it? And um, what's going on in the body? What's going on in the mind? Are those things connected? And how can we start to take steps in terms of the, you know, the pageant world specifically to change these things? So kind of starting off, one thing that I found very interesting when I was researching this and as I've read over the years just about this, is that um, as many of you guys know, but a lot of you probably also don't know, the body and the brain are so incredibly interconnected that it has a really hard time telling between whether something is an actual physical threat or if it's a, even a perceived emotional threat, a lot of times your body will have the exact same response as if it is a physical threat. There's an amazing book called The Body Keeps the Score that if you have not read yet is really incredible. And to sum it up, basically what the book talks about is that your body keeps the score of dates, certain seasons. Um, if you drive by a certain street where something traumatic happened or where maybe one of your exes lived, you know, it can take a long time for that to undo itself and for you to feel totally comfortable again. So first and foremost, I wanted to kind of set the precedent that you're not weird. You're not, there's not something wrong with you just because um, you're experiencing this for a period of time in my life. Um, I couldn't drive down L Street in 94th because um, of certain things that happened in my life because that was really, really difficult. Um, and over time, when I realized that I was able to kind of undo that and redo what that street meant to me or really what it didn't mean to me, didn't have to mean to me anymore. And I was able to kind of undo that. So we're going to start with, um, and actually before we start with this, the second part of this that I wanted to bring up as well is that our body doesn't know, our mind doesn't know either the difference between something that is a false or a real threat. So um, we have to do the work to make our bodies and our minds feel like something is not a threat, even if it is perceiving that it is, right? So I want to give you guys some tools in your toolbox today. Um, and by the way, if you're watching the video version of this and my video is kind of like wigging out, I got a new camera and a new setup and everything. So we're trying this out. Um, but I think it might be the um, how wide my screen is and it can't figure out what it wants to be when it grows up right now. So give me some grace for that and we'll, we'll figure that out for next week. But anyways, um, so we have to figure out even if something is not in reality, a real threat, threat, like I said, your body and your mind might think that it is. So it starts by figuring out why that's happening in the first place and identifying that. Okay. So first and foremost, let's start off with like, what actually is the definition of nerves technically? Why is it called nerves? Why is it called getting nervous? Because maybe you've never thought about that before. So in the body, a whitish fiber or bundle of fibers that transmits impulses of sensation to the brain or spinal cord and impulses from these to the muscles and organs. It is also defined as a person's steadiness, courage, and sense of purpose when facing a demanding situation, which I thought was really cool. An amazing journey that tested her nerves to the full, an example sentence. It also means, which I thought was dope, to brace oneself mentally to face a demanding situation. Pretty cool, huh? So as I was researching, 
um, I found this extremely interesting. Just typing in nerves. I literally typed in, what is the definition of nerves, okay? I looked on the whole first SEO page of Google and guess what it talked about? It talked about nerves in relation to public speaking. And now I knew this, like I knew that public speaking was people's number one fear. It used to be my number one fear. It's even more than death for people. But it's crazy how literally all I had to type in was nerves and the internet did its thing. And apparently people are so deathly afraid that there's some really, really great information out there. Um, but kudos to y'all in pageants who do this every day because even the people judging you and giving you a score for how you are public speaking probably could not do what you're doing themselves, which is always fun. So <laughs> kind of fun to think about. Um, let's break this down first, then let's talk about how to build you back up with these fears, okay? So um, this is coming from, I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due, by the way, the Natural Library of Medicine. So you want to look this up, it kind of breaks it down. What's actually happening in your head, your heart, and your body, different kinds of nerves, blah, 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 okay? The nervous system is made up of all the nerve cells in your body. It is through the nerve system, nervous system that we communicate with the outside world, and at the same time, many mechanisms inside of our body are controlled. The nervous system takes in information through our senses, processes the info and triggers reactions, such as making your muscles move or causing you to feel pain. For example, if you touch a hot plate, you reflexively pull your hand back and your nerves simultaneously send pain signals to your brain. Metabolic processes are also controlled by the nervous system. So what does this mean? It means it's connected to your gastrointestinal system, okay? If you have trouble, and this is like a bonus, okay, for a lot of y'all that guarantee you've never thought of this. So stress is so incredibly bad on your body, okay? You have over a hundred billion neurons in your body. They're separated into extensions. Some of them are called, um, the shorter ones are called dendrites. Some of them are called axons that are a little bit longer, okay? And they pass through your whole entire body. There's three major parts of this. So two major parts, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. And then they split into the involuntary nervous system, which is the vegetative or autonomic nervous system. If you are a client of ours, you study the autonomic nervous system when we have you study the book that we do that we send everybody in the mail. And then um, there is also more of the cognitive like frontal lobe, like what you're aware of nervous system. Like, oh, I am aware of this stress flowing through my body. And I feel like I have rapid heartbeat right now, you know, these different things, okay? So voluntary and involuntary parts. Um, however, whereas these two parts are closely linked in the central nervous system, they're usually separate in other areas of the body. Very interesting. The involuntary nervous system is made up of three parts, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and here's where I guarantee you haven't thought about this unless you're in scientific school. The enteric, which is the gastrointestinal nervous system. This is why, so like if you can't lose weight, you probably have a GI problem. You probably have an intestinal problem. You probably have a stress problem. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. However, I would encourage you to go to a doctor who can give you answers about this. Um, there's a reason why, in my belief, homeopathic Eastern medicine type doctors are becoming more popular. You're seeing more um, dietary nutrition uh, holistic anti-inflammatory nutrition type protocols out there, as well as bioidentical hormones, things of that nature becoming much more normalized because people are sick and tired of being handed pills. Not that there's anything wrong, you know, whatever. I don't really have an opinion about that. Um, but I do know that dozens, uh, as I get older, to be honest, dozens of people that I know, including my close relatives have had their lives absolutely transformed by cutting out certain foods, getting on a protocol and decreasing their stress. So um, let me just keep reading this. That's just a fun fact. So if you can't lose weight, you're probably stressed and you probably are eating the wrong things and you probably need to sleep more and it probably has nothing to do with, no, I shouldn't say nothing, but it probably has less to do with how many hours you're working out and more to do with your stress. Because if your body cannot regulate itself, then, um, and if your gut's a complete mess, then obviously you're holding on to things because stress holds on to things. Um, yeah, like I literally know somebody that has so many GI issues and um, how do I say this in a vague way on purpose? 
they have gone through, you know, some relationship stuff the past couple of years. That's that weighs on the body and the mind, right? Whether it's um, being in a bad relationship or getting out of a bad relationship or whatever, right? Or maybe your parents got a divorce or maybe you got, you know, you failed a, a test and now you're going to have to do an extra semester of medical school. Uh, school. A lot of that can get stored in your body and stored in your gut in the form of a type of trauma and your body holds on to that, your mind holds on to that, and that can create nerves as well, okay? Anxiety, all these things. So the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for bodily functions when we are at rest. It stimulates digestion, activates various metabolic processes, and helps us to relax. But the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system do not always work in opposite directions. They sometimes complement each other too. The digestive part, gastrointestinal nervous system, is a separate nervous system for the bowel, which to a great extent, autonomously, regulates bowel motility in digestion when you're healthy. Okay. You can have up to like 20 pounds of poop in your body. <laughs> Sorry for talking about this, but you think about 20 pounds, like 20 pounds, right? And no, I am not saying go take laxatives, go take these everything. That's not going to solve the problem. Okay. You have to figure out why you're getting nervous in the first place. You have to figure out what's stressing you out in the first place. Who is stressing you out? You know, do you need to change jobs? Do you need to change friends? Do you need to change relationships? Do you need to move? You know, what in your life is not working for you? I think we need to take a proper assessment of those things that are causing us to be the way that we are and be the person that we are. And to assess, like I have all of my clients do through our 7F framework, I have all of them assess on a weekly basis. How are you doing in each of these areas? So that they're not just looking at their life and like, my week sucks, my life sucks, my this sucks. I'm like, okay, well, let's tell a story why. Let's have black and white evidence of why you were or weren't ready for this. And let's make sure that you are ready so that you can thrive and not just survive, okay? Because your, your body does get into survival mode and that is part of the problem, okay? Moving forward. So why we get nervous? Something in our body or our mind feels like we should be protecting ourselves from an external threat. Number two, something consciously or non-consciously feels like a threat or makes us feel out of control. And we always want control. Number three, we think fast sometimes and we think slowly sometimes, okay? Our brains want to think quickly, especially when we compete, especially when our ego is involved, especially when we're outside of our comfort zone, we're assessing, we're looking around, we're thinking, what do I need to do to get on top? What do I, th what do I need to do to survive, right? To thrive. And our brains are trying to think, okay, how can I calculate every possible obstacle in the moment? How can I win? How can I, you know, eliminate the amount of obstacles or the things that could be unknown? That's what's happening when your brain's thinking quickly, okay? But we must also have mechanism and tools, mechanisms and tools in our back pocket to know how to get ourselves to think slowly. Now, we need to also do that while we keep our energy high so that we can perform at a pageant. Let me break this down for you. What is a scenario that this looks like? Okay, I need to be able to think quickly to be able to process the language part of my onstage question, coming out with a fire answer that has energy, passion, conviction, lands the plane, hook, line, sinker, 30 seconds in and out, have the audience by the, the you know, by the hair, their chinny, chin, chin, like just absolutely have them, right? But at the same time, I need to slow down the question enough to be present to be listening, to be open, to not have my guard up and to be able to actually understand what that MC asked me in that moment. So I have to be able to think fast and think slowly at the drop of a hat. And I will not do that if I'm nervous. My, if I'm nervous, I will only be in fast, 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 fast mode, which is how you can go through and be like, I forgot my entire walking pattern. I forgot everything I was going to say on stage. I forgot my introduction. I forgot my social impact pitch. That's why that happens. Okay. That is why we have to eliminate nervousness and we have to work on our mental mastery framework. I have a mental mastery framework. It's like 10 pages long that I work on with all of my clients for that reason. Because if you're thinking in that moment, you're done. You have to have your autonomic nervous system working for you and get it to muscle memory, get it to a place where you're able to use your cognitive brain in that moment and say, what do I want to do in this moment? How do I want to look at the judges? How do I want to smile? How do I want to work the stage? Because you know that even at your worst in that moment, it's going to be the best, right? And it's going to be top five level or whatever, okay? So how to stop being nervous? Isn't this the question? So um, remember that energy and excitement and nerves are two sides of the same coin. They're both a quarter, one's heads, one's tails, okay? 
So a acknowledging that helps you understand, okay, then I just need, I have a channeling issue, which is fueled by the thoughts that I think the emotions I choose to feel my ability to control my own mind. Um, there's practical tools like breathing exercises. Okay. So how can I slow myself down by calming myself down? Um, another thing that you can do is you can tap on either side. You could do this, or you could do this with your fingers. It's a, it's a therapy exercise, therapeutic exercise that can calm your brain down because it gives you a, a micro sense of control. That's a fun fact. Okay. If you're freaking out, um, use your psychology as well as your physiology. So like we just did physiology, physio, that's your body. Um, you could do some squats, you could jump up and down, you could skip, you could do something silly. You could just sit and, you know, feel yourself in your chair, feel your feet on the ground, ground yourself, like quite literally. You can go to your happy place in your mind. You can imagine a gr the greatest scenario. You can visualize you winning. You can visualize you answering the question perfectly. You can laugh. You can smile. Even just the act of smiling physically will change your mindset. You can distract yourself, um, not with electronics. So that's going to speed up your dopamine. That's not what you want necessarily in the moment. Um, and then lastly, the mother of all is figure out why you're freaked out in the first place. And usually to some extent, you're not prepared enough to be honest. Preparation is the mother of all calm. It really is. Like if I'm so confident in knowing every political issue, myself, my platform, everything I want to say, and I'm like, come at me. I don't think an 80 year old is going to get nervous about being like, tell us about your life, you know? Because they've lived life, they've stretched themselves to such an extent that they're like, yeah, this is comfort zone level. Like, this is easy, right? Um, so get to that place and determine what is not currently there in your prep and then go get there. Go get there in every area. Yeah, it might be hard work. Well, welcome to the real world. Welcome to winning. Welcome to beating people. Welcome to working harder than everybody else. That's how they got there. And you might say, oh, well, that's because they've been playing prep. Well, yeah, they picked up a violin when they were five. And they're a better player than you. Their talent's better. So become better. Do more. Work work as hard as I'm. Yeah. You might have to work four times as hard because you started four times later. But guess what? Do you want to win or not? Do, do you accurately have a concept of what it takes to win at the level that you want to win at? And that takes sacrifice. Okay. And so then the last thing that we teach all of our clients to do as well is you have to build a new habit that is oftentimes the exact opposite of what you've been doing. Okay. The exact opposite. You've allowed yourself to get to who you are, what you are, what you do, how you think to this very moment, based off everything that you've done, thought and think done and thought in, in the past. Okay. The actions that you've taken, the thoughts you've thought, the feelings that you felt, the things you've said. Okay. And build a game plan, look back into your life and go through and say, okay, what does Megan do when she gets nervous? Like I said, do my feet sweat <laughs> through my heels and it sinks forward. So I need to wear, you know, padding in my shoes, or I need to wear a certain kind of platform heel where my toe is not like this, right. And scraping the floor as I'm walking. I don't want to have to worry about that. So, okay, well, now that I know that that's what my feet do, I can go buy some $10, you know, foot pads on Amazon problem solved, right? Now my mind's not on what are my toes going to do? Are my feet going to slip out? Am I going to miss my turn? Cause I can't freaking turn my foot or awareness, action, problem solved. Okay. So you can do that in any area. What do you do when you get nervous? Okay. Make an action plan. Begin with the end in mind, back up, do what you need to do. Okay. Become a better competitor. It's totally possible. And the ball's in your court. You can do it. Do you have a guaranteed routine and a routine set up for how exactly you will undo these bad habits? And if you don't, why not? How do you know that you're guaranteed to change if you don't have a guaranteed game plan? Okay. As always, if you want a game plan, set up a strategy call with our team. You will not regret it. And we will find a best fit program for you or find somebody that is a best fit for the needs that you have, which could be something not in our arsenal. Um, but we talk with people every single week and help to point them in the right direction. So set up a strategy call. Um, we'd love to have you as part of the powerhouse family. Um, at the time of this recording, we have tons of free masterclasses coming out. We had a great paperwork masterclass a couple weeks ago. 
great how to answer the toughest top five questions in the pageant game masterclass. So make sure um, we'll put those links below as well. Make sure that you are joined inside of Pageant Winter Secrets where you can get first access to these trainings. Hundreds of people are signing up every single week. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Powerhouse Pageantry so you can watch the video versions of these episodes. And uh, with that, I will see you on a training very soon. Bye, guys. Hey guys, Coach Megan here, and thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Powerhouse Podcast. We're so honored to have you wherever you are, near or far away from the great metropolis of Omaha, Nebraska, where we are from. We are so proud to be your virtual coaches. If you could just share this with a friend that you feel like needs to hear this today, give us a five-star review if you haven't already, and click that link below in our show notes. We promise we are the nicest people, and we'd love to meet you, and we'd love to figure out if you're a good fit for our program or make a suggestion for a different coach, different consultant, different person that's a professional in their field that can help you. We're not territorial about needing to coach every person in the world. We just want you to find your right fit so that you can make your dreams come true and unlock the winner within you. Anyways, just wanted to encourage you guys in that today. Again, leave us a review, DM us um, on Instagram at any of our handles. And with that, we'll see you guys next week.